Hey YouTube, I'm Jacob Beach at the Preppers Bunker Outdoors, and today we have a special guest. I'm Ross from Dry Creek Forge. We're here to talk to you about Alone, Season 2, Episode 3, so stick around. <laughs> that we're going to talk about today is Mary Kate. Obviously in the very beginning of the episode, uh, Mary Kate injured herself as we saw at the end of last episode and uh, she was forced to go to the hospital and she's out of the running, uh, which is a bummer. Uh, there's a few things that I noticed. You know, I like to teach a class called why every tool option should be a one tool option and uh, safety is paramount in a stressful situation like this, especially when you're hungry, thirsty, whatever else. And using an axe to split that thin kindling is, is not the right tool for the job. And that's a place where a multi-purpose full tang knife really comes into play because the tanning would have been much safer. Uh, what did you kind of think about the situation, Russ? Well, I think it was a bad situation all around because basically what she had done was she wasn't thinking about what she did in, in the first place. Uh, she's being completely unsafe swinging an axe when I mean the first thing you think of when you saw what she did Was oh my gosh, she's gonna cut her hand everybody said the same thing. Yeah I mean, it's... Yeah, but I mean you don't use an axe in that manner anyways and You could even have used the axe to baton with like you could set the axe on top of the piece right. of wood and took a baton and beat it down into it and split it like that but It honestly just looked like she didn't really have that much experience with it in the first place Maybe, especially not for, for doing little tasks like that. This is one of the reasons why I like to have every tool overlap. Because if you had a fixed blade knife, even if it was the same size as her Mora, uh, it could have very easily done that. It could have actually done a lot of the work that she was doing, even with the axe. But since she had a large axe that wasn't really good for smaller jobs, and a small knife that definitely isn't good for larger jobs, there was really no in-between there, and what she was doing was kind of an in-between task. So safety is paramount, and obviously it's so important to think about your kit. Uh, so many people say, oh, I'm just going out for a weekend, this, that, or the other thing. What well, might not end up being just a weekend. You might find yourself in a bad situation, and if you do, it's always smart to think through your kit. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, when you think about when you're doing this kind of work, Generally, what you want to do is have your hand out of the way of the tool, if, especially if you're going to be, you know, busting through something. Anytime you split anything, the wood's going to give, and you need to be out of the way when it does because you've got a really sharp tool going through the piece of wood. So, like, say if you have a knife, you're going to lay the knife on top of the piece of wood. You're going to get your hand out of the way that was holding the log. You're going to take a baton, and you're going to split through it. If you're completely out of the way, you know, if you're smart, you'll have your feet and everything else out of the way too. But she just didn't think about that stuff. And especially you would that would be the first thing I would think of because you're alone. There's not anybody especially if you're in a real survival situation and not just on the show where somebody could come help you, because that could be the difference between life and death. Absolutely. She could bleed out if she cut her hand, you know, really severe. So I mean that's what I think about what she did. I think it was a little ridiculous, but yeah, it's a bummer, and you know what's interesting is in our minds, for just about everybody, survival is easy, and no matter how much you know, if you're not used to doing one small task that you end up doing out there, you might find yourself doing something that's silly just because you've never done it before. Now, uh, get ready for your tinfoil hats here. How is this Mary Kate's first fire on day seven? Emergency water was not one of the items that you could bring. So what has she been drinking? Uh, I just, that didn't look realistic. The timeline doesn't look realistic there. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. Could just be that I'm crazy. 
But uh, that didn't seem right to me. Yeah, it made it seem like they edited the show out to, like she had lasted longer than she really did. We don't know. It could be, you know, real. And they haven't shown her drinking out of a stream without cleaning the water or something like that. Who knows? But the way that they made it seem with the editing, it seems like she went seven days without purifying water, period. So. So I'm wondering what's going on there. Maybe she just didn't drink water for seven days. It's not really how that works, but whatever. <laughs> the next person that we're going to talk about is Larry Roberts. Larry Roberts has a stellar reputation on YouTube for being a calm and knowledgeable guy. And uh, we can see that uh, he does deal with some frustration out there. Pretty entertaining to watch. Yeah, I mean, he, he comes out there seeming like he knows what he's doing, and then he gets out there and he's just pissed at everything. <laughs> But it's really entertaining to watch. He's made a couple of decisions about his shelter placement that I definitely wouldn't have done. But, I mean, you don't really know how you're going to react until you're in that situation. So, I mean, in a place that rains as much as it does up there, I don't necessarily think I would have put the shelter right beside a stream. It was, it's a good idea to be beside a freshwater stream because that's your water source. But he's pretty dang close right now. Yeah, and Larry, and Larry knows that, and uh, he, he got himself a difficult position. He's talking about moving. I just hope that, obviously, Larry gets frustrated. I hope that he doesn't have problems come from that, because getting washed away could be pretty traumatic when you're out there alone. I mean, that could be bad. Um, he laid the beat down on a stick. That was pretty entertaining. <laughs> yeah, when he got jabbed in the collarbone. WWE <laughs> style. So that was pretty great. But uh, I'm excited to see more from Larry. I know that Larry knows a whole lot, and uh, I'm sure there's a ton that the History Channel has edited out that they're not showing of him yet, but I'm excited to see what exactly he's doing, because basically all we've got to see so far is uh, is the forest beatdown. Yeah, and he, the place that he was putting his shelter, he found, I think he said two cedars maybe that had fell over, and it actually made like two ridge poles going over the top, and he's going to take his tarp and drape it over it and you know he when he got jabbed in the shoulder he was actually in the you know process of going and getting those big poles he had on his other shelter to come up there and work on it but they really didn't show that much more after you know he threw the tarp over it so I guess we'll have to see what he does with his shelter up there and it seems like he's got it far enough away from the stream that it's not going to affect him but now my only concern with that is with this new shelter location, it's going to be safer from the stream. But he's in very difficult terrain, probably the most difficult terrain of all the contestants. So could he put himself too far away from his food and water sources, which we saw him making little footholds and pounding them in. Uh, hopefully that helps him, but hopefully he doesn't have to burn too many calories just getting to and from everywhere he has to go. Yeah, because basically he's on like the side of a, a hill or small cliff or something is how he described it. It's just straight up the, where he got put in. So, I mean, and it's so thick in there. I mean, even, I'm sure we don't realize how insanely grown up it is in there because there's ferns everywhere on the, on the floor and on the ground. And I mean, I'm sure it's a lot worse than what we actually see. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, he has a lot worse than the other contestants too, I think, because a lot of the other contestants, you see some wide open areas you see some paths and stuff from at least the bear, and he said there's not even deer, deer paths out there. So he got he got a thick area, but hopefully it's dense in resources to make up for that because I know every contestant got an area that had some strong suits but also some weak suits. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see how that goes. Yeah. All right, guys, so I want to talk a little bit about Nicole. Nicole put, was working on her shelter a little bit, debris shelter, and she's talking about how quick her supplies went. Me and Ross happened to know all about that. Yeah, we, we built a debris shelter a while back, and it, people don't realize how long it takes, especially if, you're, if you don't have, like, dead leaves or anything like that, say if you're going to build a lean-to. Uh, if you have dead leaves or something like that, it takes a lot to cover your shelter, especially... It, it might be a little easier with ferns, but you still have to weave all that stuff. So, I mean, it's going to take a lot of work for these guys to actually get a really viable shelter done that will protect them from the rain. If they're going to be using 
something besides a tarp. So. My uh, my thing I hate seeing online is, especially in the bushcraft community, is people are like, oh yeah, I was out and a snowstorm came or something happened and I'm sure I'm glad I chose to whip the shelter together. And you see like perfect cut sawn logs and all this other stuff. And I'm like, you used a chainsaw and it still probably took you 10 hours to make that. I mean, they're, they're selling a fantasy to people probably because it's attached to some product. But uh, building a shelter takes a long time. Now, with that being said, a debris shelter. With that being said, they're probably in the perfect area to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, very resource-dense area. I would be getting a lot of fir boughs and stacking them deep. And she was actually building her debris on the inside of a tarp for insulation, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd say she doesn't have to go very far to find what she's using, but, I mean, it, like what we were saying, though, it does take a lot of work. Like, the, like, the way that you see it on television or even on YouTube, it's really not as easy as a lot of people make it think because there's a lot of editing there. But, I mean, it could take you an entire day of easy, work from easy. sun up to sun down to get something that's decent enough using natural materials to really shelter you even more here in Kentucky because we don't have a lot of uh, coniferous trees yeah. especially in the winter you basically got sticks yeah. which sucks but uh, sticks and leaves that's about all you have <laughs> yeah uh, we saw her eating some uh, some little foliage there's some type of uh, I forget the name she used for it which I think she called it uh, oh, sea celery or something like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like that but uh, she was she had a little encounter with a bear she seemed like she was a little bit more shook up than she wanted to admit seeing the bear at first, especially with the noises, but she calmed down a little bit. So. The bear was a pretty good ways away. Definitely. But, I mean, some of the other contestants really have encountered a lot more bears in, a, in the last season and this season than some of these have, you know. But especially her, at least of what they've put on the show, I don't think she's really had a lot of encounters with bears yet, so... It's pretty crazy to think that there's that many on the island. She's been there for seven days and has only seen one bear across there. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. For yeah. sure. So Tracy's a pretty surprising uh, contestant out here. Uh, a lot of people are saying a lot of negative things about her, but for the most part, it's all positive. And I think it's because people are surprised. What did you think about Tracy in this episode? I think that Tracy, out of all the contestants that I've seen, I think that she is the most calm and collected person out of all of them. Like, she's had a, quite a bit of problems with bears and stuff. And she's got a horn, obviously, but she still seems like it doesn't bother her as bad as a lot of the other ones. Like, I mean, you know, some of the contestants, when they get on the show and they see a bear, they are out. Clearly. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, it does, I mean, she seems pretty tough. A lot of people underestimate her, I think. I think she'll go pretty far. Uh, one of the things that I thought was interesting, uh, her history, she has a lot of time on the AT trail and a lot of hiking and stuff like that, which people, people also didn't necessarily believe. But I think you could tell when she was setting up that gill net in those shorts, Yeah. she had some calf muscles. Yeah, they're for huge. Sure. <laughs> so uh, uh, she's walked the walk and then some for sure. Um, I think part of her strength and calm demeanor comes from the fact that she knows that she's heavier and she knows she's not a quick mover, so she's already thought about the fact that in an emergency situation, she needs to do other things. And I think the biggest thing in a survival situation is thinking about things logically, exactly like she's doing, and that's given her uh, a real good uh, advantage, I think. Yeah, knowing, knowing your strengths before you go into the situation and stuff, and taking, taking those, your strengths and your weaknesses, and really working on how you can use those to survive in this situation. I mean, a lot of people just freak out. I mean, she seems like she's calm and she tries to think everything through before she does it. So, I mean, I think I think she's going to be a contender. Absolutely. Uh, and I will say that she has the nicest shelter that we've seen, I think. Yeah. Pretty dang cool. She already got a fish and a crab, so she's got food in her gut already. Uh, very exciting person on the show so uh definitely definitely rooting for tracy yeah
All right, so uh, we'll talk about Randy next. Clearly, last season, he didn't watch my show, or else he would have some orange on that ferro rod. Yeah. But Because uh, that's a big thing that I harp on. And I've got some survival friends in the community and stuff, some who are out right now. And every time I'm telling them, get some orange on your gear. Everybody thinks that OD green is the bushcraft color. And OD green is my favorite color. So it's easy for me to understand that. But when it comes to practicality, orange is the way to go. Orange handles on a knife, orange on a ferro rod, lanyards, whatever you got to do. But... He lost his ferro rod, and he didn't quit. That's pretty awesome. Um, he's He looks like he's not so comfortable working the ocean. He wanted to work the land, uh, which isn't working out too well for him. He's got one trap uh, that looks pretty nice, but you don't need one trap. You need 50 traps. And so I really wish he would have went to the ocean first, but uh, it just it boils down to Randy wants to be there, and he's putting the work in. So... Yeah, I mean, there are other ways of procuring fire on the island, and it might be tough because everything is wet. It is really wet. Everything is soaked. But at the same time, if you're in that situation in real life, you can't give up. So, I mean, you have to think about it as you put your mind to doing something and you do it. If you have the knowledge to do it, it can happen. It might take a lot of work, a lot more than some were willing to put in. But, I mean... You can still get friction fire. How do you think that, say, the Indians or anyone else indigenous people that lived in those areas or up north or even in Alaska, how do you think they get fires without modern technology? They had it figured out. I mean, it is there is the ability to do that if you have the knowledge. So you can't, that's why I tell a lot of people, it's, it's, you know, in regular life and everything that, if you have the knowledge to do something, you don't necessarily have to have the tools. Because, I mean, there are ways of getting around having a knife and things like that. And there are a lot of survivalists that teach that stuff. But if you have the knowledge to do something, you can figure it out. And that's what he did. I mean, a lot of the other people know how to do bow drills, but especially that guy off the of last season, I can't remember his name, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, he kind of gave up after, you know, the fair rod was out. And I mean, that was just, you quit way too easy. And when you're really in that situation, you just can't do that. And a lot of people are just, you know, quick to tap. And that's just not the way it should be, especially if this was real life. I, mean, I think, though, that that's one of the strengths of the show, is the show's a mind game. And so, in the back of these guys' heads, the whole time they're starving, which sucks. And the whole time they think, man, I just have to press a button. And maybe some of them will even think, all I need is a good enough excuse to press the button. So, you know, everybody has a different limit. Everybody wants to get something different out of the show. Randy wants it. Uh, he got his friction fire going. I'm excited to see where he goes with it. So he's going to be, he's a pretty exciting character because now he's at a serious disadvantage compared to other guys. But he has that, you know go-getter attitude and he has the mentality to keep on pushing when something goes bad so you never know he could be a pretty good contender you know to win the show but he might not this might be the thing that makes him quit because you know what if he has a week where it just rains constantly and he can't get you know any more dry tender or there's some some reason something happens where he can't do that that might be what makes him go because when you're in this situation, fire is everything. Because you're, you're hypothermic, you don't have clean water, you have to have something to cook food on. I mean, and if you don't have those, you're done. For sure. So, good, good on Randy for still being out there. Hopefully he sticks out there for a while. And uh, no matter when he taps, he's already accomplished something. Which is oh, awesome. yeah. Alright guys, so our person of the episode, the person we saved to last is Jose. This episode was really exciting because this is the first time that we've seen both Jose and Nicole. And uh, it's awesome seeing Jose because he looks like he's out there comfortable and he's already crafting. Yeah, I mean, Jose, when you look at him, it seems like he's having fun out there. Like, this is what he likes to do. 
and to be able to get paid to do it, I think he really enjoys that. So, I mean, he's going out, he's trying all these, he's implementing all these skills that he has developed already, you know, and he's actually testing them in the real world scenario. He's actually having to use them to survive. So, I think he's really, he's one of the most level-headed and comfortable people out there, I think, because... And I think that's why they waited to show him because he makes it look easy. It's at least what I can see. So, this is the first time we've seen him, so it could go any way. But. Jose's been my pick from day one. And of course, by day one, I mean before they even went to the island. I told him so myself. And uh, so I'm excited to see where he goes. I'm excited to see his next projects. I'm going to make a fire blower like that myself. It'll probably look like crap. And. Uh, See how it goes it'll be fun so let us know what you think i want to hear you guys' lineup who do you think is going to win uh what kind of order do you think uh, we're going to see who do you think is going to tap next speaking of which ross who do you think is going to tap next um uh, let's see oh that's a tough one i would let me let me look at the list here. Look at the list. Let me let me think. I would say it would be a probably between either Nicole or Randy. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, I would say Nicole or Randy. Uh, I think Randy's at a huge disadvantage on that, and that's why I put him on that list. Uh, so we're just gonna have to see. I don't know if anybody's going to tap next episode, but I think the weather's going to start changing, and the game changes when it starts getting cold. And, and Randy's really going to need fire. I yeah. Mean, and it's going to be hard to keep it going all the time like he thinks. I mean, if you can't start it with a bow drill, he's he's dead in the water. So. Now, if he if he had made a fire blower like Jose has already, he'd be in a lot better position right oh, now. Because yeah. he could get a fire going from almost nothing much more easily. He's going to have to prepare wood and keep it dry beforehand that's gonna that's how it's gonna work his Otherwise, life is gonna be his life is gonna be one part food one part water and eight parts keeping feeding that fire yeah and the thing with uh, Nicole I just don't know if she's got what it takes because it just seems like it hasn't really set in for her that this is really serious and it's about to get bad so I mean what do you think about her well you know we just, it's day seven, and we haven't seen a whole lot of what Nicole has accomplished, but we we know that she has some medicinal skills, which means that she's good at foraging, which hopefully means that she's going to be good at finding little uh, vegetables and roots to eat. So uh, that might be a big advantage for her. It might not be. So we're going to have to really wait till we see the rubber hit the road. But, uh, you know, so far, I think it just comes down to... We don't, we don't know much about her, but from what we've seen so far. And I mean, all those those skills that she has are going to get, it's going to get harder to forage in the winter mm -hmm. when everything starts drying up and, you know, dying and the leaves and everything, everything starts receding. Basically, it's just going to get tougher for her. So she's going to have to implement some other skills. So. Cool stuff, guys. Alright guys, so I look forward to talking to you in the comments. Please like the channel, share, and subscribe. Uh, it's been good having you here, Ross. Please uh, check out Dry Creek Forge at facebook.com forward slash Dry Creek Forge. See you guys later.